Went to high school back in New Bedford, Massachusetts, graduated in 1950, and my high school counselor at the time said that there was no future in science or engineering. And so that's how I ended up at Cornell as an undergraduate in the hotel school. And then I decided that perhaps uh, it really, I really was more interested in engineering. We made an application to MIT, applied for a General Electric Fellowship, and luckily they both came through. And so I went on to MIT for my graduate work. Originally planned to be in electromagnetic theory, but there was a lot of excitement about information theory at MIT, and Claude Shannon was just coming to be on the faculty, and it was just a very exciting time. He taught the information theory course, and uh, I quickly figured out that information theory was the most exciting thing going on at MIT, at least seemed so to me. It was, uh, in retrospect, we call it the golden age of information theory. While at MIT, I had the good fortune to work with Jack Wozencraft teaching a course on communication and information theory. And we decided rather than focusing on information theory as applied mathematics, we would treat it as a way to do future practical engineering, that is that it would have a very practical impact. Out of those notes, we ended up writing a book, a textbook. It was published in 1965 and has indeed been very popular ever since. They asked me to uh, proofread the whole thing. And uh, so I, probably one of the few people who have read every word in that text. I really believe that uh, Irwin's textbook started paving the way and uh, many generations of engineers really got trained on that book. After being at MIT for seven years, we decided to accept a position at the brand new University of California here in San Diego. Irwin is the first link between information theory and the MIT school in California. Irwin comes to UCSD in 1966 and he comes out of MIT which is um, the hotbed of information theory for the world, really a, a concentration information theorist. Irwin was the leading uh, entrepreneur in the area of wireless. Uh, it, it did bring forth a technology that was uh, originally received with great skepticism. I'm talking about code division multiple access. And so for several years there was what was often referred to as a religious war between TDMA and CDMA. And uh, we just had to continue to focus on making improvements, bringing the technology forward, better phones, better infrastructure, improved technology. If Erwin Jacobs hadn't pushed CDMA in the early 90s and convinced people that it was possible to do so, we'd still be stuck with the limitations of TDMA and the inefficiencies. Roberto Padovani came up with some very good ideas for increasing the data carrying capability of CDMA. So it worked uh, perfectly, I think, from an engineering standpoint and also from a business standpoint. We're a very tight group, uh, very focused on innovation, um, and to try to find elegant solutions, as Irwin's always say, we have to find the elegant solution uh, to very practical problems. Approaches we followed in both of my two companies, Linkabit and then Qualcomm, is try to do something innovative rather than trying to make a small.